Welcome to part two, everybody. Hello, everybody, says Eric. I say hi as well. Hi, Jamie. Hi. Now, what we're going to talk about today is neutrinos. You talked about how the soul is made of neutrinos, and upon death, it changes from a particle to a wave. Can you talk a little bit about that? He's saying that the neutrinos are the more dense, it's a more denser vibration. It's actually what helps the energetic system communicate to the physical system and stay in contact with the emotional and the mental body. He says, think of it as constant plugins to create highways and byways of communication. And he said, we were also talking about, if I may carry on the conversation, we are also talking about how the spirit separates from the physical body. And it is when those neutrinos, if I'm saying it right, loses the opportunity or the choice to communicate. And that happens when, well, there's several chemical reactions in the body, of course, when we no longer breathe in oxygen, when our heart is no, no longer pumping blood. He says, we know we have those physical things, but I think what we really want to talk about is how does the energy decide to leave the physical body? And if you're studying the energetic system of the physical body, you'll know already that there are auras or energetic fields around the physical body that remains with the physical body. There is also a system. He's giving me a really cool image. I'm trying to figure out how to explain it in a second. There's also a system of energetic patterns that create the soul inside the body. Now the energetic field off of the physical body, the skin, bones, muscles, material, cells, they remain because that is attached and kind of a glow, if you can say, off of a three-dimensional, you know, tangible item. I'm going to call the body an item. <laughs> yep. He says, yep, I am. So that's not holding the soul in place, and that's not going to leave when your soul leaves your body. It belongs to the physical body. So there's different energetic vibrations in the body that will no longer associate so that there's almost like a separation, water and oil, both liquids, both completely different kinds of liquids. They can touch, hold space for each other, but they never really mix well. This is kind of how our soul is inside of our physical body, the luggage that contains it or the jar that holds the liquid. When the body can no longer sustain a life force, meaning it can no longer absorb nutrition, it can no longer have oxygen, it can no longer filtrate and function on its own in a physical state, then the soul has no reason to stay in the body. So it starts its own kind of chemical reaction, like the physical body does, and it ceases to communicate to the energy in the physical body to all the systems. In that process, he said, of just giving a visual, it looks a bit like a light show. It, too many pictures and talking at once. Uh oh. <laughs> I am talented and multitask, you know, kind of a queen here, but not when you do that stuff, Eric. <laughs> So I'm going to pause and talk about what he's showing me, and okay. then we'll get back to his words. Uh, so I'm looking at a, a person's body. They look like they're floating in darkness, uh, but there's a lot of color in the person's body, all kinds of color, every hue from the deep reds, blacks, to the whites, everywhere, pinks. And they look like um, pockets of light. I don't know, like if you were to hold flashlights to the body, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not blended well, like watercolor. This looks like a specific staged laser light show in a way, but mm -hmm. not sharp like a laser. And, um, these bursts of light are, are
coming on and off. And this is almost like the, the end of the communication between the energetic body and the physical body. <clears throat> He's saying he's trying to show it to me in slow-mo because <laughs> the separation happens in instant, instantaneously in many cases. And that's why you'll hear the definition from some people or spirits that it was their light was on. And then as easy as you turn the light switch off, they're out. Hmm. It's done. That's it. There's no thought process attached to it. Your brain doesn't have to process death while it's happening. Your emotional body doesn't have to process it. It is truly the communication between the energetic system and the physical system. Oh, he's pausing. Okay. Now, um, how does it actually separate from, I mean, how is the soul attached to the body? I, I, you know, we've talked about microtubules before in each cell. Mm-hmm. He says they spiral out much like a cord mm -hmm. that connects to, an, lack, for lack of a better word, an energetic system that kind of feeds in or roots in to whatever it needs to be associated to, be it the tissue, the bone, the marrow, the organ. He says think of it as an intricate root system. And it latches onto the microtubules? Is that what it does? Yes. Interesting. And as it separates from those microtubules, so talk to me a little bit about that. He's sitting there with his mouth closed and he's looking at me. And he says, as easy as I choose not to speak to you, as as easy as the energy stops communicating. He goes, I don't think I know how to explain it anymore. So, he says, so why don't you ask me another question about it and we'll see if we can get, <laughs> see if we can get some intelligence up in his head. Well, is it, is it some electrical, you know, react, a reaction yeah. with the microtubule that short circuits? Energy electrical. He goes, I'll go for that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. What about, you, you, we talked about neutrinos. Now, what happens to the neutrinos themselves when they leave the body? You, you talked about how they, um, how they sort of turn into a wave pattern instead of the particle pattern that it's in when it's in the body. Is that true? <laughs> He's using the, the old bell technique from the board. Ding! Yes, okay. that's true. All right. Now, what are those wave patterns for? What do they do? Again, he showed me a lot of pictures. Just talk to me, Eric. Easier, much easier for me. He's... Of course... <laughs> The human way, he's going to explain what they're not, because that's what humans can understand best. <laughs> Sass my frass. He says that um, they do not turn into wavelengths to maintain our personality, our character, or our memory. So stop that train of train of thought. We weren't even on that train of thought. We were asking a question. Yeah, about neutrinos. What are they for in the spirit world? What do they do? Do they carry information? They, are they information? Are they, you know, the particle of consciousness? What is it exactly? They're, they're, they're not patterns of information. Um, and again, he's saying that it's not your personality, it's not your character, it's not your memories, it's not your associations to... Past lives, current lives, future lives. Um, he liked the concept that you kind of threw out of it being consciousness. He said, just think of them as being, you're going to have to find a way to explain it. 
didn't, he didn't drink his coffee today. <laughs> think of being a satellite dish, tiny little satellite dishes that um, transmit uh, knowledge, emotion, consciousness, connectedness, unity, things of that nature. But he says it. It's so fucking hard to explain because anyone who's listening or even us who are asking the questions are trying to see it in a very human kind of state or very scientific state where I know if I gave you a straw, you can measure the straw and tell me consistently what that straw is going to do, that if you apply sucking pressure, a fluid is going to come through it. But he says these things, they change to meet your needs. There's not a physical quality or an element in a spirit that stays the same consistently every time you go back to it. I could give you a straw and spirit and you can take it and use it as a car. <laughs> I go, that was really random. He said, well, yeah, I'm trying to make it random because we're asking how this one element is going to perform each time or why it's being used. And he says, in our higher dimensions, it's just not this way. We pull together what we need out of our own energetic system, out of our own soul or spirit. We don't have this consistency that there is on earth. And what, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> you lost me. The, the, the neurons? No, no, no. Microtubules? Uh, Microtubules? Those. I want those. Microtubules. Thank you. Um, he started saying it and all this stuff, and that he gets me lost when he does that. <laughs> the, the microtubules are almost the, the halfway step between energetic system and physical system. You know, so you can see them being put in place for the body to maintain its status and with the soul, but after the separation is there, they transcend into an energetic system, but they're no longer used as a stable factor because they were more important when you were in the body. Kind of like the, the kind of like the strange appendix. Okay. No. I don't know how that related whatsoever. It's unimportant. Uh, we really don't need it. And so after death, we don't need the microtubules. Is that what you're saying? He kind of shifts his body around. Okay. He says, you've got it. All right. Well, we'll close off there for part two, and we're on to part three in a moment. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, he says. Bye, everyone.